In this video, we're counting down 20 wacky computers you could buy in the 1980s, back in the decade when they had soul, they had character, they had substance. Number one, apricot computers. Now you may have heard of Apple computers, who hasn't, but have you heard of Apricot Computers. Apricot was a UK manufacturer of a number of computer models that included the Apricot F1, which was released in 1984. The cool thing about the Apricot one is it had an infrared wireless keyboard. Pretty cool for 1984. The Peach. Now keeping with the fruit theme apparently, have you heard of Peach Computers? Well, Peach Computers were made by a company that you might associate with power tools and not computers. Hitachi. What is with the 1980s? naming computers after fruits. The Tangerine Mycotan 65 was originally released in 1979, but it sold throughout the early 1980s. You may know the company Tangerine Computer Systems by another name. Another division of this company was called Auric. Number four, Acorn Computers. This UK company produced some very popular models, including the Electron, Archimedes, and the BBC Micro. And more about that one a little bit later. Number five, Jupiter Ace. When you look at the Jupiter Ace, you might be thinking white ZX Spectrum. There's a reason for this. The company Jupiter Cantab was formed by Richard Alterweiser and Stephen Vickers. They were both on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum design team. Commodore Pet. Oh, that sounds so cute. Sounds like a faithful dog. This very popular computer in the 1970s also sold throughout the early 1980s. PET was actually an acronym for Personal Electronic Transactor. But PET sounds much friendlier, doesn't it? Number seven, Mattel Aquarius. In the 1980s, everyone tried to get on the computer production bandwagon. Even the toy company that brought you Barbie, He-Man, and Hot Wheels. The Mattel Aquarius featured an Intel 8048 8-bit microprocessor and four kilobytes of RAM. Number eight, the Dragon. The Dragon 32 was introduced in 1982 by the Welsh company Dragon Data. It was very successful in the UK and throughout Europe. It featured a Motorola 6809E microprocessor and 32 kilobytes of RAM. Number nine, BBC Micro. Now speaking earlier about the computer bandwagon, the UK government did the same thing. Their division British Broadcasting Company, BBC, made computers like the BBC Micro. They were designed for classrooms to promote computer literacy and education. Number 10, the Sam Coupe. Released at the end of the 1980s by UK company Miles Gordon Technology, the Sam Coupe was designed as an evolution of the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and it was even compatible with the software and peripherals number 11. The Sorcerer. The Exidy Sorcerer was originally developed in 1978 but continued to sell in stores in the early 1980s and was powered by an 8-bit Intel 8080 microprocessor and had 8 kilobytes of RAM. Number 12, The Wizard. The Wizard, that is with two Zs, was sold by an Australian company called Dick Smith in 1982. It was compatible with the Tandy TRS-80, which helped sales dramatically in Australia and in New Zealand. It was powered by a Zilog Z80A microprocessor and had 16 kilobytes of RAM. The Genie. Also called Video Genie in some markets, the Genie though was known in the USA as the PMC-80. Well that's not very cool is it? Genie, far more cooler. Number 14, Micro B. This was an Australian made computer range. It was aimed at schools and hobbyists. Number 15, Alice. The Alice computer was made by Matra, a French company. It was powered by a Motorola 6803 microprocessor and had a whopping 4 kilobytes of RAM. Number 16, the next computer had a fruity name and also a girl's name combined. Any guesses? If you're an Apple nut or is that an Apple pip, you would have guessed the Apple Lisa released in 1983. It was named after Steve Jobs' daughter, Lisa Nicole Jobs, but it was also an acronym for Local Integrated Software Architecture. Number 17, the next computer is a computer from New Zealand, the Poly One. Number of crackers, this was the name of the computer, and the computer company was called Polycorp. This was a very promising Kiwi company, and their product was pretty good. The New Zealand government even promised to buy $10 million of Poly One computers for schools throughout the country. But unfortunately for Polycorp, the New Zealand government reneged on this promise. Instead, they spent it on sports. What sporting event did they spend it on? Their very controversial Springbok Tour. Along with this, and the fact that 
Apple was dumping Apple II computers on the New Zealand market, they were selling the Apple II to New Zealand schools at $1,200, while the normal retail price was $4,812. There was no way that Polycorp could compete. Number 18, the Coco. Now, this is short for Color Computer. It was a series of computers that were produced by Tandy Corporation, a subsidiary of Radio Shack. The Coco computers were powered by a Motorola 6809E microprocessor, and they had between 4 kilobytes and 64 kilobytes of RAM, depending on the model. Number 19, the Peanut. The Peanut, you say? Before the release of the IBM Junior, it was codenamed the Peanut because it was much smaller than the previous IBM model. Everyone was waiting for the Peanut to be released. When it got released, it was released as the IBM Junior. Peanut sounds far more cuter though. Amiga. This may sound like a strange choice for this list. The Commodore Amiga was very, very popular and still is quite popular today. But if we think about the word Amiga, it has a Spanish or Portuguese origin, meaning female friend or girlfriend, which was great because in the 1980s, you could tell your friends you had a girlfriend. While in development, Jay Minor, the president of Amiga, codenamed the Amiga Lorraine after his wife. Here's one of the Amiga developers hilariously talking about Lorraine. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and share this video for your friends, please. The whole machine also, by the way, was called Lorraine. Lorraine was our code name for what we were working on. Lorraine was the name of the president's wife too. And at first she was honored to have the machine named after her. She came in during those nine days between when we got the hardware and CES and she heard the things we were saying about Lorraine. <laughs> Then she wasn't quite so honored. <laughs>